This time I'd like to call the meeting of the Madison County Physical Court to order. Kenny. Master King. Here. Master Barger. Here. Master Hughes. Here. Master Cone. Here. Judge Clark. Here. I uh, hope you've all had a chance to look and review the minutes of the last meeting. If there are no changes or discussion, the motion wouldn't be in order to approve those as submitted. So moved. Second. Master King. Yes. Master Barger. Yes. Master Hughes. Yes. Master Cone. Yes. Judge Clark. Yes. Uh, treasurer's report. When? Uh, I passed out the treasurer's report to you. This is through July 31st, 2012. Um, our fund balance on June 30th, 2012 was $3,434,485.85. Our fund balance on July 31st, 2012, uh, that was the general fund. I'm, I apologize. That was the general fund balance. Our total balance was $4,496,194.88. And on uh, July 31st, 2012 is $5,430,104.76. As for the end of July, the way the revenues and expenditures, the general fund revenues are at 25%. The expenditures are at 5.5%. The road fund revenues are at 15.9% and the expenditures are at 4.5. The jail fund, the revenues are at 18.7% and our expenditures are at 8.8. CSEP fund, the revenues are at 7.2% and the expenditures are at 0.6%. And the 911 fund, the revenues are at 8% and their expenditures are at 3.9. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions from Glenna? If not, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, order of business. I would like to ask the court's permission to amend the agenda. Uh, the first item on there is kind of a lease purchase land for brush dump. It's something we brought up before and talked about. Um, we've had some conversations. The magistrate have had some conversations and just uh, I think the consensus consensus right now is that uh, we're going to wait and look at other options and see what we can do so with the court's permission I'd like to remove that from the agenda so moved. second Master King yes Master Barger yes Master Hughes yes Master Combs yes Judge Clark yes okay we'll get into get to short agenda today and we'll kind of go through this pretty quick uh, first off is the uh, appointment, as we always do, of our uh, local emergency, ma emergency man manager director and then the deputy director. And I think we can do these at the same time. I'd like the court's permission to reappoint uh, Carl Richards as the uh, manager director and Michael Bryan as the deputy director. I'll move. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. And I can't tell you, I think everybody here knows the wonderful job that they do. Um, next, pay resolution on the food bank. And they're getting pretty close to closing out. Uh, Mr. Lowry came in and had a meeting with him the other day. Uh, they're serving a ton of people out there. They're open. Uh, they're planning sometime in September to have a kind of an open house greet and meet and the court will be invited because of our participation and everything we've done to try to help them. So uh, I'll be letting you all know when that is, but uh, just came in to thank all of us for, you know, for helping them because probably without our help they couldn't have pulled this off. But uh, it's resolution 19 and it's Central Kentucky designed for $5,030 and uh, it's a reimbursement to God's Outreach, the food bank for $100.25 for a total of uh, $5,123. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, next, I've got a one, I'd like the court's permission to reappoint Mr. Roger Barger to the Valley View Ferry Board. Uh, I can't tell you all, what a job Roger does down there working with George Dean and keeping that thing running and making it economically feasible, uh, money for it. So uh, I'd like the court's permission to uh, reappoint Roger Barger to the Valley View Ferry with uh, 
appointment that expires March 14, 2016. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. <clears throat> Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, one other appointment, uh, Mr. Jimmy Markham. Jimmy's helped us serve as the Madison County Road Commissioner, and this really doesn't involve a whole lot, but Jimmy does a good job, and he's out all over the county all the time, and uh, he's uh, said that he would serve another term. So I would like the court's permission to reappoint Jimmy Markham to uh, Madison County Road Commissioner, and his appointment will uh, expire on February 22nd, 2016. Thank you. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Want to go on and set our motor vehicle uh, rates. Uh, we talked about this before. They are the exact as they've been in the last, I guess, 30 years. Uh, it's 10 cents of, uh, per $100 of assessed value. And that's in the watercraft also. So we're gonna go, and I'm gonna talk to you in my judge report a little bit about the, the tax rates and where we, where we are and what we're gonna be doing there too. But uh, I'd like to go on and approve this and get it back into local government at this time. But this is, as I said, the same rate that it's been for, well, the past 20 years, I know. And I need a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? <clears throat> yes. Uh, judges report a few things. Uh, battle of Richmond had great crowds out there. I was out there Saturday and watched the battle. Um, parking was scarce. I parked down next to the 300-acre track. <laughs> I was kind of crippled and had to walk all the way up through there. but. Uh, just super crowds out there. Uh, the Battle of Richmond, they're having this service of, re of remembrance uh, Thursday, August 30th at Mount Zion Church at 7 o'clock, and everybody's invited to that. So uh, if you can get out there, you know, they'd, they'd really appreciate a good crowd there. Uh, Pops in the Park was excellent. I talked to Billy yesterday, and he was thanking the fiscal court and the road department for working with him on the park so they could have the fireworks and stuff. I had over 1,300 people at Pops in the Park. I thought there were a lot more people than that. It looked like it, but oh, that's, still a bunch. That's, that's still a whole lot of people to come out and enjoy the, the music. So everything this weekend was a success. I've got a letter here I'd like to read real quick uh, on behalf of Southern Madison Water Board, and it's to the uh, magistrates and judge executive, uh, Tom Moreland, your Madison County GIS coordinator, has been assisting us in a project to map our lines with the use of GPS data. Our commissioners and myself want to publicly express to you the high regard we have for Mr. Moreland and his staff. They have been unfaithful, unfailingly competent, professional, and considerate in working with us and our employees. It's our opinion that he is a great asset for the entire county. Cordially yours, Tommy Bussell, manager of the Southern Madison Water District. Look at that Tom, head, it's swelling up. I think. <laughs> Tom, that's an excellent job, you know, and that's that's what we're all about, helping the districts and things. Uh, real briefly, we, we, we haven't do, done all the computations, but uh, I'm proud to say that no taxing district is taking any kind of increase as far as uh, taxes from last year. Uh, we're going to keep ours the same at 8-3. I've talked to the the only one that uh, looks like they might lower it one-tenth of one percent is EMS. Uh, and Jimmy just feels like they've got a little excess money. Of course, they're looking at some different options. But um, library, extension office, uh, health department, everybody has agreed to keep their rates the same. and. Looking at the paper, Ronica, it looks like both school districts, the Berea Community District and also the Madison County Schools, have decided to do the same thing. So that's a very positive note, especially with the way the economy is. Um, and I, I talked to Billy yesterday, and, and a lot of people really took advantage of the reassessment where their property values went down a little bit. So a lot of people won't have as, as high a tax bill next year by leaving these rates the same as they did this past year. 
So all in all, it's worked out good. Everybody is uh, contributing. Everybody's kind of agreed to do exactly what we're doing. And um, we've got to have some special call meetings. We've got to get some ads put in the paper and stuff uh, to get all this done. But we'll probably, at our September 11th meeting, be able to finalize everybody's taxing uh, rates and be able to answer any questions that anybody might have. So just wanted to close out on that in the judge's report. Uh, department heads, anybody? Carl? I uh, just wanted to talk briefly about the uh, August 14th uh, airport exercise we did. Uh, did it at 6 at night. Uh, it was in the paper. It was on uh, 27 and 18. Uh, good turnout. Over 100 people participated. We had people from EKU's Board of Regions. We had airport board members there. Uh, all the first responders, obviously, were there uh, in, in significant numbers. Like I said, over 100 people signed in to our sign-in sheets. So uh, went very well. Uh, had two experts from the Bluegrass Airport there evaluating with us. And they were really impressed with, couldn't believe it was our first exercise out there, how smooth things went. We've got some things we're going to tweak and make better, but they were very complimentary about uh, what they saw there. And they were out there with us the whole time, went from 6 o'clock to a little bit after 8. So that was a great, great thing. Next exercise we've got is the big graded CSEP one, federally graded CSEP exercise on September the 19th. Uh, that's on a Wednesday. It will start sometime after 8.30. Don't know when it's, you know surprised us whenever they started and then uh, I've given Mark the bids we had two bids we got for the calendars I need Mark to open those so we can evaluate them and bring them back to you at next court uh, this was the least number of bidders we've ever had on the calendar but they are the two that always win the bid so maybe everyone else gave up I don't know but anyway it's the two largest local uh, printers out there so and that's all I really had for you guys Carl, the first one is dated Examples. And it contains the bid and some samples as well. Right. Okay. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? Or? We just, Carl and I had a really good meeting with uh, some representatives of FEMA and uh, Mission Critical on the uh, expansion of the ELC, and we'll be bringing that to you in the next month or two, probably. Yeah, we hope so. Trying to get a little more money out of Washington. <laughs> it looks looks favorable. It though. does look favorable for expanding the EOC, getting ready for you know D-Mill to start out at the depot. Uh, you know, there's various timelines, but if you look at the earliest timeline, it's a lot quicker than most think. Uh, so we need to get prepared for not only staffing, but facility-wise to be able to be 24-7 like everyone's done when D-Mill starts in their community. Because, you know, once the operations begin, they typically don't stop until they're done. So. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, guys. Uh, Department Heads Chief, I wanted you to come up anyway. I wanted to ask how your airport right. meeting went. I just want to give a very short report of um, the activity we've had. Uh, we've had 307 fire calls this year. Uh, 31 of them have been structure fires. Um, approximately about $240,000 worth of damage, which is not real terrible. We've, we've been saving a lot of structures. Um, we saved one Sunday. Uh, it was, um, guys did a heck of a job. Uh, Bluegrass Army Depot, I want to thank them for coming out and help us, helping us out on Bria Road. Uh, we've had um, 20 grass fires, which is kind of unbelievable uh, for the dry time we had, but um, you know the citizens of Mass County are pretty smart about uh, starting fires out, um, you know, getting grass fires. Uh, we've had some rubbish fires. We've had a few. Had to get the EPA in on, on several uh, <laughs> uh, people out in the county, but you know they seem to be calming down from from a year ago. Also, pretty short report, but there it is. <laughs> is that since January first? Yes. Okay. Did we're, were you able to make the airport board meeting? <clears throat> yes, I did. Yeah. Bring us up, and I'll bring you updated a little bit. The airport board had called me and. They were looking at the possibility of buying a fire truck, but they they would need personnel that were trained to use it with a 
plane fire like Carl's, the the you know the exercise that they went through, Correct. and they'd ask Jim and maybe the chief at Bria to come out and see if indeed uh, they could find the money to purchase that if we would be willing to work with them, you know, and man in the truck in case of an emergency. Yeah, the, their decision was they they were really wor worried about the liability side of it. Uh, they pretty well decided not, not to buy it. Okay. Um, there is a pretty good liability when you start putting a service out there. Um, but, you know, I, I stood behind them either way they went. Uh, you know, what's best for the citizens is what we, what we want, but I understand where they came from. But, uh, yeah, they, they decided not to do it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, oh, he's up there. Let me ask a question. I was going to bring up my comments anyway. The uh, city closing their fire station. I know I've talked to the chief, and he thinks it's not going to be a big deal for us to cover the industrial area out there. Uh, my concern is we don't we don't have a ladder truck, do we? No, no. And, and those buildings awful tall for just a regular uh, fire truck to be pumping water to try to put a fire out if there was one. Well, uh, they would be yes. Um, our row has shown up first. Will be we'll be hooking to it, you know, to a standpipe. We'll, we'll be assisting the, the sprinklers. Uh, that takes an amount of time, a certain amount of time to do that. And by the time Richmond gets to us or the Army Depot gets to us, they'll have the other resources it takes. Uh, so it's so far since we've taken it over or, or assisting them, uh, we've had one call, and it was actually it was questionable whether it was a county or, or a city call anyway. So we, uh, my concern is these people that own these businesses out there that they realize that you know what we can really do when we get there. Yeah, well we limited. Well, we've took tours. Uh, we haven't got done with them, but we are taking tours, and and they're very aware. Uh, we, we let them know what we've got. And you know they know, and you know, but they also understand that city's going to be coming, you know, right behind us. So, you know, it's and every, I, I, th I think I'm correct in saying that every building out there uh, has a sprinkler system in it, doesn't it, Jerry? Yes, yes. Are we doing any <clears throat> anything towards fire pre prevention in the county? Uh, yeah, Lloyd is doing fire prevention. I, I, I don't know that. He has the time to do what, what I'd like to see done. Uh, I, myself, I'd like to see us be able to go to every fifth grade class in the school, in, you know, in, in the whole system. I, I think every kid needs to see this. Um, my time is kind of strapped. We, we do go to these schools, but I don't, we're not able to cover every single grade or every single fifth grade or fourth grade. I, fourth and fifth, I think, is, is right in that area where they really start understanding and um, we can really get across to them. Um, so I. But now, Jim Ed and Lloyd trying to put together a lot more scheduling now that school's starting to get them out to Safety City. Yeah, they're getting them out to Safety City. Now, we do go do, do the fire prevention at Safety City uh, as they come. Um, we do the smoke room and, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do the stop, drop, and roll and things like that. Um, uh, we do got that safety charter that if if we need to go out to schools, uh, we can take it out and show them pretty close same thing. But um, that mobile unit, uh, I, I've seen it and I've seen y'all present it, and the kids they really they go for it. Yeah, especially when you go to school, <laughs> it gets them out of class. We all know, you know, everybody loves that. <laughs> Heck, I still do. But uh, <laughs> but you know, it gets them out of class, and and I think they get more out of it because it's an exciting thing for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, I mean, that's that's just I just remember how I was in school. <laughs> well, that probably warrants a full time position, though. <laughs> it could be, but Lloyd Jordanson with the health department, where we've entered into the MOU with them and Safety City, he's just uh, of course school's been out all summer, but I know he's working on a regular regular schedule to try to get yeah, he, every he stays, school out there. He, I mean, he stays busy with them. I mean, he stays busy with all of it. He's uh, covering the whole the whole thing, so it's um, you know we're, we're coordinating with him. You know we're going to try to go a little further. I, I I'll tell you something else I would like to do, and it's just it's personally for me. I'd like to be more involved with the fire drills at school. Um, I was just by happen was at B. Michael Caudle, uh picking up my daughter for a doctor's appointment last last week, and just by happen they were having a fire drill at you know Glenn Marshall right beside, and. <laughs> And as we was leaving, you know, the kids ain't used to, aren't used to seeing a fire truck or a unit, you know, a, a fire vehicle there. And they looked at me and I mean, looked terrified. I mean, just, oh, we really got something here. 
So, you know, I'd like to I'd like to be on scene to kind of be with them, you know, reassure them, yeah, we're going to be here. Um, let them understand, you know, that, that we care about them and, um, and that we want to be part of it. And, uh, you know, it's just something neat to see. Uh, I know B. Michael Cottle got out, I think it was yesterday, in two minutes and ten seconds. And that, that's good. That's very good. Chief, I'd like to uh, clear something up if I can on where we did have the mutual aid agreement as you made with the city. Uh, some people were taking it that we are responsible for the fires in the city limits. Mm -hmm. uh, as you s stated there, you know, since we took over or helping them, that mutual aid agreement is that we are to assist the city of Richmond yes. not to take no, over. No, yeah, no, we're not taking so, you know, the, so the public will know because you got residents out in that area that, you know, We'll be there to assist Correct. to back up any far service, but to we, be there to be the first responders and it to be our initial call. Correct. I mean, out in the general public. I, I mean, I hear it from the news or yeah. different things <laughs> other than hearing it, you know, from the body. But uh, there is a sense out there that, you know, the county's come in and took over. I want to verify we have not no, took over no. there. No, we haven't taken it over. Um, and matter of fact, it doesn't matter, um, you know, if it's a county call, we, we don't put city above us. Uh, you know, That's but to be blunt about it, I, I don't want to sound mean about it. We don't put the city above city calls above the county calls. You know, we're we're a county fire department. And that's you know that's, that's what we do. Um, but you know, that's I, yeah. I've, I've kind of heard questions, but I, I'll give you the upside to all this. Uh, when we signed this automatic aid agreement, uh, yeah, we start covering Duncanon. But in the same note, um, areas like uh, like a mile or two down Lex Lexington Road, Tate's Creek, Barnes Mill, and that area where it's really no man's land, when the volunteers takes you know quite a while to get there, they're 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 stuck way out. You know we're getting help just like that. Uh, they're going to be right right on right on our, our back door, and uh, and on Lancaster Road is going to be a huge. Um, our five miles runs out to Elliott Ford Road and goes in it just a little bit. Uh, Richmond Fire Department's five miles goes all the way out to um, Wildcat Drive, which is subdivision runs around uh, Kersal School. And um, there's a lot of um, uh, people saving, uh, residents saving money in that area. Uh, I have one guy, now you can take it how you want to, but he's called me twice and told me the same story that before he was paying, the, his insurance, insurance was gonna go up about four times uh, if he didn't put the city in there, or get you know, give them their five miles because it is outside our five miles. So it um, it's just a good cooperative agreement. I spoke at the at the interlocal government meeting about it, you know, and we've looked at it, Mayor Barnes and the commission, and it's just uh, the bottom line is helping people out in the county and with Richmond's assistance. I mean, it's not just us helping on Duncannon, it's the city helping us on some areas that Correct. they're closer to that, that Correct. they're closer to than we are. So yes. it's just a, it's a good agreement where we're all working together and uh, providing the best possible service and, we, and lowering it, a lot of people's insurance. Uh, we, uh, it probably isn't as well known as it should be, but, but we went in city limits and fought many, many, many fires with them guys. Um, and they've came out to help us. Uh, I'm all for us helping whoever we need to help. At. But I just wanted to clear that up that yep. we have not took over their territory. No, I just, no, no whatsoever. And and, and it, when it's out in the county, it's you know it, we're in charge. When it's in the city, they're in charge. And that's just just the way it is. So you know we'll we, we'll take charge until they arrive, and then from there we'll you know we turn it over to them. Uh, thanks, Chief. No. <clears throat> Any other department heads? Uh, okay, comments from magistrates, Greg? Well, I was, went down the Arbuckle and looked at it, and Leroy and them was pretty well on their way, it looks like, uh, getting it worked out. And, and you have any timeline when maybe Blacktop will be? Uh, that'd be close to yeah. Okay, but it, it's a good project that's uh, to open that road back up to the people in that area. And other than that, that's all. Uh, Roger? Uh, Leroy, are we working on the trail out at the White House? Yeah. I haven't been out there, but I had one or two tell me they thought they already started on it. I haven't been out there to see it. Appreciate that. I think it'll be a big help. He's a 
a lot of people comments about uh, being able to walk out there and how they enjoy it. Uh, I went to the uh, reenactment on Sunday morning on the depot property, and I was really impressed about how high up you are, and they're kind of down the hole, and you can see the reenactment a lot better and see the individuals and how they react. Used to you just kind of see the front lines and everybody behind them. But, uh, it turned out really well. Uh, both sides was really impressed in how their uh, reenactment went, you know, and how precise they were. And, had a good crowd, but everybody was really impressed with it, I think. It was the first time that that pub was allowed. First time it's, I wouldn't be there for the first time, and, uh, and uh, they're, they're wanting to come back and do it in the same location, and I think they will as long as uh, there's not a serious problem about being on the property. You know, That's all we got, Jeff. Okay. Bill Ray? Yeah, let's see here. Let me see if I get this Ray on oh, here. Let's go right ahead again. Y'all, uh, <laughs> <laughs> monsieur, monsieur. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Joe Casillo from here in Richmond, he's on America's Got Talent semi-finalist tonight. And uh, Howard Stern's been giving him crap about his uh, beret. He said, that beret don't do you any good. So so that's kind of – so, Joe, he's been passing out these berets. And I just want to encourage everyone to watch America's Got Talent tonight and cast a vote for Joe Castillo because he's really talented. Uh, does that sand art. It's very beautiful. And uh, – He's doing us proud, so that's about all I got, Monsieur. Billy Ray, and and I might add that Billy Ray was at Pops at the park with the family and did have his beret on. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, no comment, Judge. <clears throat> okay, uh, anybody from the audience want to approach the court? If not, uh, motion to pay the claims and approve the transfers. So moved. Second. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, next court date will be September the 11th at 9.30. And is it here? here. It's in Breer. No, it's here. It's odd. It's right. Okay. Being Breer on the 11th. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved.